Australia has so many natural resources. I mean, even if you go the fossil fuel route, uh, the electricity should be very cheap. For a country with one of the most abundant energy resources, we actually got a problem because our energy is very expensive and it's actually becoming more and more unreliable. The coal-fired power stations are getting very, very old. We had over 100 breakdowns in the last 12 months in our coal-fired power stations. Now, what does it mean when those coal-fired power stations fail? It means you pay more for electricity. So what do we need? We need fast, dispatchable power that helps us in the gaps when the renewable renewables are not fully there and that is gas presented by your energy answers right at the beginning we had the coal-fired power stations that were make centralized energy it was sent out to our manufacturers to our people nobody really cared about it much turn the light on it works and it's quite cheap so now we realize we burn the coal co2 not too good so we want to replace it and i'm all a friend of solar i'm a friend of wind you see my programs are promoted but the truth is at this point in time we still need the coal-fired power stations as a base load but this is the issue the coal-fired power stations are getting very very old we had over 100 unforeseen breakdowns in the last 12 months in our coal-fired power stations so in new south wales for example last november 35 percent of the whole coal-fired power station capacity was off in queensland we had over 75 breakdowns in the coal-fired power stations now what does it mean when those coal-fired power stations fail it means you pay more for electricity the wholesale price spikes 30 40 50 80 percent every time one of those those coal-fired power stations fails. So this is not just a technical problem, this is really underpinning employment, confidence, the way we run our future. Say, for example, the Future Made in Australia Fund, we put a billion dollars into it. If the energy price keeps on going up, just forget about Made in Australia. We got already the tyranny of distance, so anything we make gonna have to be transported far, far into other places. That adds cost. Other than the coal-fired power station getting older, you've got a second issue, which is gas. When, let's say, a coal-fired power station dies in the backside, we go, ooh, 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 oh, there's gas. Let's turn that one on. It comes quite immediately back on stream, so it fills the gap. The problem is now, we don't have enough gas. And why don't we have enough gas? Not because we don't create enough, but because we sell it all overseas to Japan. And guess what? They go, oh, we got too much. So they on-sell it to Taiwan, to Korea, and in the last 12 months, they made a billion dollar profit on our gas. Makes no sense. Why are we not keeping the gas that we dig up, that is ours, that we need for ourselves, at least to some degree? So Western Australia was smart. They kept 15% of all the gas that goes out. They have to keep it for themselves. We haven't done that for the eastern part of Australia. Why not? Why aren't we introducing it? It's our gas. It's actually yours. It's mine. It's everybody's. It's the whole of Australia. And we export it and we're short. And you know one of the biggest scandals? We're now building import facilities for our own gas. Why should the whole country suffer? We've got to go back and renegotiate some of those contracts, keep our gas for ourselves. Some environmentalists might say, oh, we shouldn't really burn more gas. It's not good for the environment. But hang on, we're going to export it to Korea, to Thailand, to Japan, to China, and they're going to burn it there. So the CO2 effect for the whole world is exactly the same. We're damn hypocrites. So if we keep a bit of gas for ourselves to keep our manufacturing going, to keep our employment going, I can't see a difference for the whole world if it's burnt here or somewhere else. End of story. Just recently, you might have heard we got the federal government battery rebate and that's a smart move so the government will spend 2.3 billion to subsidize batteries in people's homes for example when a coal fire power station fails suddenly somebody goes oh ooh, ooh, thousand batteries here five thousand here zzz, come back into the grid we need you right now but where's that investment coming from it's not coming from the distributors of energy it's not come from the retailers of energy it's not coming from the generator of energy it's coming from you and it's coming from the taxpayers now hang on if i made 50 years worth of money out of energy and the grid is now become unreliable and there are record profits by the energy players why aren't they then investing back into it but in any case so those batteries are very good for the grid because they create stability so it's not some benevolent kind of action it's something we really needed in order to keep the grid going together with the gas together with the coal and when one of those coal-fired power stations goes off we're not going to look like at a 24-hour outage or so from people in the industry they've spoken to me they are talking about 
a couple of months for a million plus people before we get the major coal-fired power station back online if there's a major breakdown. This is very, very serious. Now, what do individuals going to do about it when we have that big blackout for the first time? The rich ones, they will go and get their solar and their battery and they're going to isolate their home and they're going to be okay. Baby boomers like me, we're going to spend the money and we're going to sit in our comfort and we'll look out there and we go, oh, bad luck. But what about the renters? What about people who actually can't afford to buy this? That's going to be really, again, from a society point of view, a have and have nots. It's splitting Australia even further. I mean, over the last 20 years, I came to Australia, it was all very kind of similar. You know, you go to different pubs, different prices, similar people. And now, really, you see big differences, even in Sydney and Melbourne, between the rich suburbs and the poorer suburbs. And this kind of stuff is only going to make it worse. Now, that additional battery capacity, which is probably coming in the next two or three years, is not bad and it's helping, but it's not enough. Do you remember a couple of months ago in Spain and Portugal, the whole grid went down? It's a grid that relies a lot on renewables. And renewables are really good when you have enough dispatchable power, immediate power, either via hydro, either via batteries, or fast gas-fired power stations. Those are the things you need to fill the gaps in between with renewables till the renewables are so much that we actually got oversupply and then you've got different places you can pick it at. But we're not there yet. And I'm going to give you a prediction. If we do not go for the one solution that we kind of need to go for ASAP, we're going to be in the same position. And you're going to watch that video one day and go, oh, gee, how did he know all that? And I love renewables. I'm not against renewables. But renewables by themselves alone at this point in time are not there to save our bacon. So gas-fired turbines, we need to build more. We need to build them ASAP to fill the gap when the coal becomes less and less reliable, the coal-fired power stations. And then we need something still for the interim to replace them. So that whole kind of vilification of gas that's going on at the moment, gas does much less CO2 than, for example, brown coal. We've got it in the country, so what do we have to do? We're gonna fix the gas shortage that we've caused ourselves. We've gotta invest in gas-fired power stations immediately to kind of be there in time when the coal-fired power stations are really clapped out to the last minute. And that kind of planning will create certainty and will create optimism so people are actually willing to invest back into manufacturing because they know that the energy prices going forward are not going to be impossible. 30% cheaper energy prices means cheaper groceries, cheaper transport, cheaper manufactured goods, more competition around the world, all of those things. At the moment, by us selling gas and coal cheap to the world, we're exporting those future jobs. We're not keeping them here. So as a real friend of renewables, I don't want to see renewables blamed for the blackouts we potentially could have in the future because of a lack of forward planning, because of a lack of forward investment by people who should know better. So as my final word, Australia must act. Stop exporting all our gas, keep some for ourselves, build some gas-fired power stations ASAP, roll out more batteries and more dispatchable power fast. The vehicle to grid is gonna be a really big game changer. This is when actually your EVs can be plugged into your house and be a backup and also become a stabilization force for the grid. Imagine a million EVs all suddenly being available to actually support our grid. I can then lose a coal fire power station and the politicization of energy is what you guys all pay for now with the higher electricity prices. Then nuclear came out of nowhere. Nuclear is not gonna help us for another 20 years. Gas turbines now, <laughs> is one of the solutions. If you're in the lucky position that you can afford a battery and a solar system, and you see this train coming towards you and you don't want to be in that position and you'd be nice to your neighbors and invite them over when there's the blackout, then this is the right time to do get a battery in a solar system. And this is not a flogging exercise for battery and solar, but that's the only thing in your own little world that you can do. If you've got a house, get a reliable battery and solar system to then when the grid is down, you'll still have a life. And if you're nice, you've got a spare bedroom and you invite your neighbor in until they have still a life. So when the whole mess has come because people in power sat on their backside, don't blame renewables. Renewables are part of the solution and they are the future. But at this point in time, they cannot do all the lifting. So we need help. 
then we got the gas. Are we selling it cheap? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Let's fix it. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.